Hey there. Welcome to the very first lesson of the Unreal Engine 5 Quick Start Guide for Indie Animators. Um, well, that's a mouthful. Anyway, take it away, Jason. So first thing you want to do is make sure to sign up for an Epic account and download and install the Epic Launcher and install Unreal Engine 5.4.4. That's the version that we're going to be using for this tutorial. For a little bit more detail on that process, you can click on the link above or in the description for the scene prep live stream that I did, where I discuss how to sign up for an Epic account, download the launcher, install the engine, also on how to make a custom MetaHuman if you want to do that. Let's go ahead and open up the Epic launcher. And then you can just hit launch engine as long as you have 5.4.4 selected here. Otherwise, you can go to library and just make sure that you have that installed and hit launch. All right, we're going to go ahead and create a games project, just a blank, and make sure to have starter content checked and ray tracing checked if your computer can handle it. And we'll just create a project called Pixelverse. Click Create. If you get any pop-ups, just go ahead and hit Dismiss. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go up to this hamburger menu in the upper left, right next to Perspective on the left-hand side of that, and just take a look and see if this is enabled or disabled for you. I have a remote desktop connection. Mine's disabled by default because of a setting that I have, and I'm going to show you how to change that. Make sure that real time is checked. Uh, if it's not, then you'll need to do what I'm going to do. The way to set that permanently is if we go up to edit, editor preferences, and type in the search box real time. And it's under this editor performance under Disable Real-Time Viewports by Default and Remote Sessions. We want that unchecked. And that's going to be for all future projects. This is an editor-wide setting, so it's going to be every future project that we open. So go ahead and close out of that. Now if we click on the hamburger menu, it should be enabled or checked. If it's not checked, go ahead and check the box. And then uh, you can see Control-R is how to switch back and forth between real-time and not real-time. And if your computer can't handle real-time, or it can sometimes, and, and other times it has a problem, you can always just do control R, and you can see real time is off right here, uh, and then control R, real time is back on. Now we're gonna go to the content drawer. So the way to get to the content drawer is either click down here to open it up, because it's auto hides, or you can control space bar, and it will actually unhide it. If you click away, it'll hide it again. Either way, whatever you're comfortable with, and then right click in anywhere in here, it doesn't matter what folder, and you're going to click Add Quixel Content. If you get a pop-up like this, go ahead and close it. And then in the upper right is where you want to sign into your account. You'll need to do that before you can proceed. And then over to the left, once you're signed in, go ahead and click on MetaHumans. Anybody who doesn't have a custom MetaHuman, you can just download one of these default ones. Just pick one of those. Otherwise, you can go to My MetaHumans and select your custom MetaHuman before you start downloading and just select the highest quality and hit the download button. If you have a custom MetaHuman, it'll start generating, and that takes quite a while. It can take 15 minutes or longer before it'll start downloading. But if you select one of the default MetaHumans, it'll start downloading immediately, and usually only takes about five minutes or so, depending on your internet connection. All right, go ahead and click the Add button. It will add it to your project, and we'll just close out of this window. The next thing you're gonna do is go to the Character Blueprint, to get to that, just you have to click down here on the content drawer button or do the control space. And we're going to go into the MetaHuman folder on here. This one, in this case, is called Simone Hoodie, but it should be whatever your character is that you downloaded. Go into that folder. And here's the character blueprint. It's just a generic icon right now. It'll say blueprint class, and it'll be BP plus the name. Just double click on that. Go ahead and close this blueprint editor. Don't need that open. It was just so that we could get these plugin prompts to pop up and then go ahead and hit enable missing on all three of these. Make sure you do all three before you restart and then just hit the restart button. Okay. And then we're going to go back into the character blueprint again, just to make sure everything loaded. It'll probably default right back into the same folder, but if not, just navigate down into the metahumans folder into your characters folder and double click on the blueprint one more time. This time we should see it open up the blueprint editor without any errors at the bottom. Okay, and then the only place we're going to go in here just briefly is go to this viewport tab up here towards the top just to make sure that everything loads. Go ahead and close this tab or hit X out of it in the upper right. Same thing. All right, there's no other messages appearing that textures are loading or shaders. 
So next thing is to drag the character into the scene. So go ahead and go back to the character folder and drag that blueprint to the scene. Doesn't matter where, we're going to reset it anyway. As long as you see this gizmo here, you know that the character is in the scene and you can see that the name is selected up here in the outliner. And go ahead and click on this little arrow pointing to the left next to location. And it's going to reset the location to the center of the viewport or the center of the world. And just make sure that this is still selected, BP Simone, in, in my case. As long as that's selected and you hit the F as in frame on the keyboard, then you can zoom right into where they are. That is a tip to get back to the center of a world or to any object within a world. If you get lost, if you inside of a mountain and if you're out in space, you can always go back to the outliner and find an object that you know is in a place that you recognize and just click on that. So like a directional light a lot of times will be in the center and you can you can see where it's located by selecting the object and seeing its location. As long as it says zero, it'll take you back home essentially and you can just hit the F button. And in this case, it zoomed out because it's it's looking at the directional light. But let's go back to Simone, F again. And whenever I put a character in a scene, I always get them to the center of the viewport, at least usually I do. And then I change their rotation, the one on the far right, to 140 degrees. And the reason being is that that's the direction the sun is pointing. You can see their shadows behind them. Their, their face and their entire front of them is, being, is directly exposed to the sunshine. So you have the best lighting to see their face and everything. Otherwise they're facing away and they're in a shadow. So we've got her selected and we still have her framed in the shot. But if you want to make sure, you can always click the character and hit F. And then you can rotate around. But you have to make sure you've you've selected that the object and hit the F button before you do this. So that it's framed perfectly and then you can hold the option key down. And as you're holding the option key down, press and hold the left mouse button. And then you're going to hold both of those down and then push the mouse to the right and that's going to allow you to rotate around. So just play with that up and down, left and right. Option, left mouse button, holding those as you move the mouse around. It's going to allow you to rotate. So the next thing we want to do is add some animations to our project so that we can target them to her and start animating her right away. So the way to do that is control space bar to open up our content drawer or click down in the lower left. And we're just going to add, you right click anywhere, and go to Add Feature or Content Pack. Just going to click on that. And we're going to click on the third person content pack and click Add to Project. Then you might get a pop-up like this. You can just close it. And then once you know that's, that it's in there, you can just hit Cancel or X out of this. You don't need it open anymore. And then we need to target an animation to her because she doesn't have any animations associated with her yet. So the way to do that is to open up the content drawer and we're going to go to where that mannequin is, to where its animations are, and we're going to use its animations that come with this pack. So if you go to Characters and try to do the drop down, then go to Mannequins, and then go into the Animations folder here. And then actually we want to drill down even farther, go into Manny. Right click on one of these, doesn't matter which one, and click on Retarget Animations. In order to sort through these, you just click on this little filter here and check the box for Animation Sequence. And you also want to filter it even further because some of these animations are not useful. They're just reference animations for the system. And so another way to filter this out even further when you're just doing these particular animations is they start with MM. Those are the only ones that are actually useful animations for us to use. So just put MM. So this is really just specifically when you're retargeting the many animations. And now we need to select our character. What you can do is you usually will just see it right here at the top, but if you're not sure which one it is, we're going to type in here Simone, or the character's name, and that should filter out the exact skeletal mesh that we need. So these are the only two things that are associated with that character. So it's actually this one. So you're going to click on that to highlight it. And it looks like just some hands because that's the only things that are visible and a tiny little piece of her ankle. So then uh, once you've got those targeted, click one to highlight it, do control A to select all, do export animations. And I usually put it in the character folder. So just go ahead and drill down into MetaHumans. This is her, the name I'm using here. So just right click on the character folder and do new folder. And I'll call it RT Anims, just for short. Retargeted animations, just so you know that those are retargeted ones. But just to keep things organized. You won't actually need to go in here, but I'll show you what I mean by that. And go ahead and hit export on here. And then you can just leave this default, hit export. It's going to show you what animations you've retargeted to Simone or your character. This window will pop open, but you don't need that open. You can just close it. All right, so now she's got animations associated with her. Next thing to do is we're going to create a level sequence. 
I find this to be the easiest way if you just go up here to this clapper and hit the add level sequence. And we'll just call this lesson one. And to keep things organized, I would right click in here and click on new folder. And I just call it SEQ just for short, short for sequence. And then double click it, go in there, save it in there. Okay, so we have a level sequence open and we're gonna go ahead and click on the character to select them, make sure they're highlighted and click the add button down here in the sequencer and choose actor to sequence right at the very top. And then at the very top of that window, add BP and then whatever your character's name is. That's gonna put us into animation mode, which is just one of the modes. These colored circles around her body are part of a control rig. We're not gonna use that right now. So you can just delete these. You can just highlight each one of these. So under body and face, you wanna do one at a time, just delete that one. You can't hurt anything in here. Uh, you would just delete them out of the sequencer. It's not a big deal if you accidentally delete the wrong thing. But just make sure you only delete the control rigs. And if you end up with something like this where it looks like there's a bunch of highlights on the face, you can just click on the character's name in the in the sequencer and it'll, it'll go away. All right, and then we're ready to animate. So just click on the plus sign next to where it says body. Go up here to animation. And we'll just search for, let's start with idle. And just go ahead and select that. It'll drop a, an animation sequence into the t uh, sequencer, and it's already put her in the idle pose. And the way to play that is just down here on the play button. You can see that she's breathing, kind of just standing there staring in space. Okay. And if you want to get back to the beginning, you can just grab this playhead and drag it back, or you can hit this to front button here. It'll bring it back to the front and just, you can, these buttons all have labels so you can figure out which one's which. If you want it to loop, you can just hit press this, this button here. There's a no looping as by default, but you can click it and it'll change it to the looping icon. And then if you hit play, it'll just keep playing over and over again. All right, let's go ahead and stop that. We'll go back to the beginning. And then let's delete that animation out of there and put a different one in there. So just click it to highlight it and just hit delete on the keyboard. So we've already got the animation track, so we can just add an animation this way. If we hit the plus sign on here, it won't be that big long menu. And let's try run. There's very few to choose from. We've got walk, run, idle, and a couple others. But we'll do run. If you want to shorten the sequence, you can just drag this red marker far over here. Another way you can do that is go to the very end or wherever you want in this and then click this little red button here and it'll bring that to wherever your playhead is. Okay, and go ahead and hit play because we've already got it on repeat so it should just start over, keep running. And it's just an in-place animation. It's not actually moving, so. Okay, well, let's just try some other ones. If you click it to highlight it and hit delete on the keyboard and if you see this happen, you, if you see the head pop off like this, you can just select the character, go to details over here, type in this box hidden, HIDD is fine, and check this box for actor hidden in game, and then uncheck it again. And this is a useful thing for other purposes, but it's a quick way to get their body back together like that. Let me just X out of that, and then uh, let's go ahead and try another animation. Hit the plus sign. Let's try walk. So we've got in place, forward. Let's just try forward and see what happens. And if you end up having the playhead too far along and it actually puts the animation in the wrong place, you can just grab this and drag it over to the very beginning. And then if you want to extend it so it's the full length, just drag this over. And go ahead and hit play. Yeah, that one's still in place. I don't know why it says forward. All right, the last thing we're going to do on this lesson, which is pretty important, is to make sure to go ahead and save it. And you want to save as many times as you can along the way. I waited until now just so I could show you this at the very end. So down here, it'll tell you how many unsaved items there are. So just go ahead and click on that where it says, for me, it says 10 unsaved. Click that. And it'll have everything checked in here that needs to be saved. Go ahead and hit save selected. And then you can just save it right into the main content folder. I'm going to call it main. 
because we're just going to save the main level and go ahead and hit save. And that's it. Oh, hello. I can't say I was exactly expecting to be moved around like an action figure today, but it comes with the job, I suppose. Jason wanted me to tell you that in the next lesson, we'll dive into optimizing the project settings and mastering the viewport navigation, all while keeping our focus on animation. Let your dreams be your compass and your curiosity be your path.